We want to bring a sister that I have a pleasure to meet that's doing something great that's tied to our vision of Operation Safe Communities and the Safe Message. Uh, sister that's doing a great thing around want you to turn in your bullets. Everybody asking for a gun, but if you turn the bullet, that's a bullet that didn't go out the gun. So she has a spiritual piece of commitment, and they're taking those bullets and melting them down to a bullet on your wrist instead of bullet in somebody's heart. Bracelet. And so without further ado, Sister Ashley is going to come forth and talk about they got to give us a bullet for something. We don't want to be shell-shocked. Hi, my name is Ashley Taylor. Um, as Reva said, thank you. First, I want to say thank you, Reva, for um, inviting me, for finding us all the way in Florida. Um, uh, him and Lance McCarthy to got together and found our president, Susan Kennedy, who is in Florida. She founded Bullets for Life uh, in 2016, where she goes around collecting bullets off of the street, like bullets. And basically what that means is she does it because she, she started the organization after King Carter was killed. He was a five-year-old who was killed by a stray bullet in Florida, in South Florida. And so her, the, whole, the whole idea behind it is donate a bullet, save a life. Each bullet that we take off of the streets, we take the life out of that bullet. That bullet dies, we pop it safely. There's no big bang. But every, light, every bullet that's donated, we take the life out of that bullet. We take the power out of that bullet. That bullet can no longer take a life. And with that bullet, we per repurpose it with a purpose, and we make accessories and jewelry, like I have on my wrist today. Um, we make bracelets, we make uh, necklaces, and we, we, of course, we sell them and everything. All the proceeds that we make are 100% back into our organization so that we can bring, continue to raise awareness about sense gun violence and the effects that it has on our communities. But we also, too, with a lot of our accessories, donate them to families who've been affected by gun violence. We raise awareness about mothers who've lost children and what that means for them. A lot of, a lot of mothers have other children to remain, to care for after losing the child to sense of gun violence. That mother needs resources. So I'm very, very honored to be in the presence of a lot of my brothers today because that's the type of support that a lot of these mothers who have lost children need. Um, a lot, we're, we're working on de developing a program that allows single mothers to have simple things done by people in their community, whether it's fixing a door, a cabinet, painting a wall, or taking a dog out for a walk. Some of these mothers can't get out of their bed. Some of these families can't move forward after losing, losing a child. PTSD has, has blanketed our community. People are striving to, to survive, you know, so. Um, that's the message behind Bullets for Life. Donate a bullet, save a life, and we will be popping up all over the round, all over Chicago, giving our message. Thank you. Uh, so we're, we're wrapping up, and we just have three more speakers. And one of the speakers I want you guys to stick around also to hear about this, and that's reparations. We'll find out exactly why. I don't know how he's going to be able to get two minutes about reparations and how. They, but we're going to we're going to get it on our heart. But next. We're going to go, we're not coming right to you, Mike, but we're going to go to Minister Raheem Edgerton, um, Temple of Mercy, and the original Men in Black. And then after him, then we go to Brother um, Mike Taylor. In the name of the everlasting Father, he that causes all that exists to exist, he that is self-existent. He directs the sonships of millions and trillions of years. He who made time to see the universe. He's known by so many names. Allah, Aten, Yahweh, Jehovah, and many others. But I bear witness that all of those names refer to the same one, Almighty God. It is to him whom I give reverence and to whom I submit. I'm Brother Minister Raheem Kassad Aten, also known professionally as a musician. They call me the sax preacher. Yes, sir. And uh, kind of know a lot of people in the room already. I've been working in our community for years. Um, since 1978, truthfully, with a production called Toma Production, where we uh, worked hard to get our musicians and our artists and our vocalists and our rappers to get out and learn the music business and be on their own. Uh, then later on, in 1990, I was inspired to create the Temple of Mercy Association, which is an all-inclusive, black conscious, righteous movement. Out of that movement, we created the original Men in Black, which is like a paramilitary group that patrols the community doing what we call hospitality patrol. Not only do we watch our people in the community, but we also watch the police. One of the main things I think we need to focus on 
Uh, we said violence, everyone says violence, but there's a certain kind of violence that's more prevalent that we need to address, and that is gun violence. Uh, Harold Belafonte, one of our old civil rights leaders, as well as a uh, musician and vocalist, he said in the gun game, black people are the most hunted. And that also includes the police hunting us down and we hunting one another. It ain't just the problem that we have guns in the community. The problem is a flood of guns. Water is good for everybody, but you wouldn't want a flood, would you? And so we're dealing with a flood of guns in our community. Uh, I'm going to wrap up with a scripture from the Bible, Matthew uh, 25, Matthew 13, verse 25. And it says, while men slept, an enemy came in and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. I want us to think about it. This group that you're looking at right now is not the normal group that you see that sits down at a meeting and then after they tell all what it is they wanted to do, they ask about a grant and they don't do nothing. You're looking at a group who are out here doing it already and now asking that the money follow them in the work that they're doing. And so we're asking for those resources from the county and the city and the state because we demand them and we need them to move forward with what we're doing. I thank Brother Reven and Brother State Rep LaShawn Ford, who I do support 100%. Even though I'm not in the politics, I see you all on the street. Please. Amen. So he may not be in politics, but politics are in him, and you're going to do things to him if you don't make politics do it the way it's supposed to. Next up is Mike um, Tyler, um, the second. Thank you, everybody. Um, my name is Mike Tyler. You already introduced me. Um, I am. Uh, a robotics and physics teacher for Camelot Education. I'm also a physics tutor at Chicago State University. I come before you all in support of the most worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge. I've been working in the trenches for about three years now. Last year, in fact, I was a teacher of the year. Uh, the students do not want to hear scriptures anymore. Mm -hmm. They do not want to see you guys going to church every day and not doing anything. And that's how they view it. I'm dealing with students who are at risk, who are mandated by court to come to class. We need the parents to help. We need more community involvement. So far, uh, the Grand Lodge has supported every endeavor educationally. And as I stated before, I come here off the strength of my brother, uh, Shannon Callahan. Callahan. He knows what I do in the community. And I'm just here to support every organization here because the students need you now. The time for talk has ended. Mm -hmm. It is all we to say. Thank you. Thank you. And now, Eli Muhammad, co-founder of Hip Hop Detox. Right. And then, two more, we're done. First of all, I want to thank Reven Fellows, Books Over Ball, Sister Chantal, Level Up, Millennial Coalition, the representative, Sean K. Ford. The reason why I'm here, Many people who already know, know that we've been on the street, in the schools, in the universities, juvenile detention center, whatever institution you want to think of, since 2002, starting with our own money. And from 2002 to now, Darion Albert murder that happened in 2006 was a pivotal year for us because it made it where we wanted to make serious change. 2009, correct. So, Come in full circle back to the same place. We done seen it all. People who pop up, people who come through, people who do what they do. But with this particular group, we're not begging. We're not even really asking because you already got a train in motion. There's a lot of elections coming up. So for all those who did not come as far as on the media, Everybody here should have a phone up. If you got Facebook Live, Instagram Live, you should be recording this because we can't rely on people to tell our story. Yes. First thing. Right. Second thing. When I say hip hop, you say detox. Hip hop, detox. detox. Hip hop, detox. detox. Truth without boundaries is what hip hop means. Mm -hmm. So all the social engineering that goes on is dedicated to behavioral change. So when you see your children wilding out. Remember, wilding out didn't just start today. 
the apple don't fall too far from the tree. 1974, there was 970 murders in the city of Chicago. We've been denied resources for a long damn time. So everybody here who come, who watch, who talk, just recognize. You got people who are walking the walk, talking the talk, right. and they being about it. But we need you to become activated because we got to go block by block. We got to be amongst our own people, and we got to force them to put our resources back into our neighborhoods because those 23, 24 predominantly black neighborhoods, they're being starved on purpose. It's not accidental. It's strategic. Yes. It's purposeful. We must make them pay. This is an election year. It's time. Right. Yeah. Tyrone yes. Muhammad. My name is Tyrone Muhammad from ECCSC, Ex-Cons for Community and Social Change. Um, thank you, LaShawn Ford. Thank you for bringing this group together. And I love the collaboration because that's what is, what is needed. Brother Reed and Sellers, I thank you for that. Um, this is the problem. Not until you did I even believe that politicians have the heart to even do or render what it is. You know, I voted one time in my life because of my distrust with politicians. And I'm gonna just quite frankly say with no disrespect to any pastor or reverend that might be here. Pastors and reverends, I distrust, my distrust with them. And these so-called business leaders and community leaders yes. and, and money men who are millionaires living in our communities. While we sit here and stand here um, asking the government to give us what we do and what we deserve and we commanding our tax dollars be brought to our communities. <laughs> I'm really at the point where I'm not paying taxes no more. I, I really am because my tax dollars don't do anything for my community. If my tax dollars serve everyone else, we have to make that an issue. Our tax dollars, how do they, how are they allocated? This is the reason for the ex-cons for community and social change. Sitting in that prison cell for 21 years, isolated in my bathroom. Try that, living in your washroom for 21 years. Watch a politician, family members abandon their son, and daughters, and the whole community being abandoned because we're removed from the streets. And we decided that we was no longer gonna wait on legislators, That's what's right. uh, 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 the benevolence of white folks to save us. We decided we was gonna form a coalition of brothers who, who know the streets, who destroyed the streets, mm -hmm. and it's incumbent upon us to correct the streets. This is why you have ECC, SC, and I had the audacity to call it ex-cons. Because the guys of, in my group never felt like citizens, so we can't return to something that we was never a part of. That's right. So on the books it say ex-felons, ex-cons. Okay, we're gonna show them that ex-cons can do more than violate their, their women, their children, and their communities. So if these sons of ours, the nomads, are running around crazy, it's our fault. Generation dropped the ball on me, I'd be doggone if I'm going to drop the ball on that generation. That's right. And this is what's happening. And our politicians are dropping the ball on us. And if any politician don't stand behind this man, we vote them out of office. Amen. Mm -hmm. Second. The, the, the uh, superintendent of police, he's given us a platform yes, to sit down and talk. Yes, and you hear the, the nonsense of our people talking about, why are you going to meet with him or why are you going to meet with Ron? Because they're in office. <laughs> and, and from what I saw, I haven't seen a, a mayor, and we won't go to have Washington, go on here. Yeah. We can go that far. That's how far we got to go to decide <laughs> who was for our community. I haven't seen a politician. So to say that this politician or this person we can't work with, when have we ever worked with any politician in our neighborhoods and community? <laughs> so, man, it's time to start somewhere. It's time to hold them accountable. But we have a 10-point program to, to, to eliminate the violence. I'm not going to talk about it here. There's no time. But we need resources, and we need our family in this coalition 
to make it happen. We're going to bring peace to bell in our community, and I'm tired of our women and children being terrorized, and we're going to start also with these community stores and neighborhoods, vipers yes. and blood suckers that suck the blood out of our community, and they give nothing back. That's right. Thank you. So now, next steps. Thank you. Okay. Let's give State Rep a hand. So we talk about the next steps, and we thank everybody for being patient. But this is the work that people are doing from God to heart. And whether money come down or not, we're going to do what we got to do for our people. Yeah. And uh, we also got to redirect that $680 billion that black women control, and that $1.3 trillion we're putting out of the community on coffee, loose squares, DVDs, and chew. Mm -hmm. Let's put that money where it is and make our business. So our next step is going to be. Coffee. The coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so, our next step, we're going to be calling for the brothers. Um, also, I say brothers, I'm a Phi Beta Sigma, State Rep 4 it is, and my brother here. Uh, we, we're going to be calling, I don't know if you guys should send your prayers out, Brother Philip Jackson, who's a great, great champion of black men and black boys. Nationally, one million black men marched children to school. That's been his campaign for years. Yeah. He's now down a little bit. He's not feeling, put your prayers out there. Mm -hmm. And he's not been up working that black star. But we want to, in honor of Brother Philip Jackson, what next step is. Right. School starts September 4th. Uh, we want to meet at Black Men. We want to meet with brothers, moms, and uh, fraternity brothers, brothers from the street. And we want to go and meet. And then on the first day of school, that's March our children, one million black men to take our children to school safely and throughout the year protect our children. Because if we don't, the police department will be escorting them to school. And without a black presence of black men to take care of our children, it looks like we're neglecting, it looks like the white man has to do your job. Mm -hmm. So we ask on behalf of all the brothers, we want to, I'm gonna bring Brother Shannon to let us know what time and where we're, we want you to come out. That's continued Brother Phillips' legacy while he's now down, and that's raise up and be black men, because when boys, when men stand up, boys sit down. Mm -hmm. yeah. The day we came up with to meet, um, school starts September the 4th, but we're going to meet at uh, the Most Worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge, uh, September the 2nd. That's 809 42nd Place, Chicago, Illinois. The time will be 3 o'clock. Uh, we encourage all groups to come together so we can collectively uh, see exactly where we're going to go, the That's schools right. we're going to hit, and uh, just come up with a master plan. So again, that would be September the 2nd at the Most Worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge at 809 42nd Place. That's right on 42nd Place in Cottage Grove in Chicago, Illinois. And thank you all for what you got going. And we also want to cover every community. So That's we're right. asking for the south side, the west side, That's the right. north side, wherever you have uh, your, your, your community at, we, am, we ask you all to come out and also conglomerate with us to come up with a master plan. We're not just hitting one section or That's one right. school. We're trying to affect the whole city of Chicago with this effort. No more west side, south Thank side. You. We all moving right. outside. Thank you so much. We've gotten 148 guys off the street going to work every day. Some of the guys, raise your hands if you've been working with the good neighbors. You got a job as a result of this. Here's one, there's another one. So what we do is we go out and we hustle jobs. You know, that's the way our people learn how to survive. We survive by not begging, but hustling. We ain't no victims. That's right. And that's what I'm just saying. We are not, we have power. But we have to unite our power together. Because when the spiders come together, they can weave a net that nobody can break. Okay? So that's what we have to do. We can, they can put a lion in check. And that's what we believe. We believe that by helping each other, by being good, by forgiving each other, by get, forgetting the nonsense, we believe that we can tie up that lion. Amen? Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. Attention prayer. Come together. We bless you, Lord, today. Yes, Lord, we your people. And the Bible says that you hear us when we cry out to you. Yes. And so we cry out to you, Lord, help. Just help us, Lord. Help us, Father, to be helpless one to the other. Let us not continue to tear down each other. Yes. Build us up, Father God, so that we can help our children, Father God, to know who you are, to love you, to seek you with their whole hearts. Yeah. Help us to build our communities, Father God. Help us to be builders in our communities and not tear down our community. Yeah. Help us to build up one another and not tear down one another. Yeah. That is my earnest prayer. Just help us to build, to be builders that you have called us to be so that we won't be the reproach of the whole world. Mm -hmm. Everybody look at the black man and waiting for the black man to take his rightful place. Yes. Help us to take our rightful place. Now you've heard many people, Father God, 
talk about what they want to do and what they're trying to do and how they're trying to help. And it's been so wonderful hearing all these dreams and ideas <coughs> and the genius of this group in this meeting. We pray, Father God, that you would just bless it, that you would breathe on it, that it might be fruitful in the name of Jesus. We also pray, Father, for our representative who's trying so hard. He's everywhere. He pushes himself so hard. He goes unafraid, Father God. Help him, Father protect. God. Strengthen him. Protect him. Provide what he needs. Provide the people around him to give him good advice mm -hmm. that he will hear from you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Amen.